welcome to this video. My name is Obi Chatterjee and I'm going to introduce you to the origins of Hinduism. Hinduism is probably the oldest religion in the world. It was originally the only religion of the Indian subcontinent and took its name from the Indus River. However, its original tradition of passing on its practices orally meant that Hinduism existed for centuries before it was first documented. Moreover, its beliefs and traditions have changed over time, sometimes due to invasions by other cultures. As a result, Hinduism can be seen as embracing many traditions. For example, Buddhism and Sikhism were both started by people who rejected certain aspects of Hinduism. Nonetheless, they share many philosophical similarities. Recent archaeological research using carbon dating has revealed that Indus Valley civilization predates both Mesopotamian and Egyptian civilizations. With evidence of a pre-Indus Valley civilization from 7000 BCE to 6000 BCE, the Indus Valley civilization or Harappan civilization is now believed to have lasted from 6000 BCE to around 1750 BCE. It existed in the basin of the river Indus which flows through what is now Pakistan. The Indus Valley civilization was an indigenous development growing out of earlier local cultures. It did not develop through contact with other civilizations such as that of ancient Egypt. Their religion appears to have involved temple rituals and ritual bathing. There is also some evidence of animal sacrifice. Between 2000 BCE and 1000 BCE, Indo-Iranian-speaking Aryan tribes from the Eurasian steppes made their way to the Indian subcontinent in two large waves. They brought with them gods like Agni and Indra. At around the same time, partly perhaps due to weaker monsoons, the people of the Indus Valley shifted their crop patterns from large-grained cereals like wheat and barley to drought-resistant species like rice. As the yield diminished, the organised large storage system gave way to household-based crop processing and storage systems. This acted as a catalyst for the deurbanization of the civilization. By 1500 BCE, the Indus Valley civilization had faded away, and the Vedic religion centred on the sacrifice and sharing the sacrificial meal with each other and with the different Vedic gods or devas. These gods lived in three realms, the earth, the atmosphere and the sky. Earth contains the plant god Shoma, the fire god Agni and the god of priestly power Brashpati. The atmosphere contains the warrior Indra, the wind Vayu, the storm gods or Maruts and the terrible Rudra. The sky contains the sky god Dyaus, from the same root as Zeus the lord of cosmic law Varuna, his friend the god of night Mitra, the nourisher Pushan, and the pervader Vishnu. Some religious scholars regard the Vedic belief system as henotheism, where there are many gods but one deity is worshipped as supreme. During the time of the Rig Veda, two class distinctions arose originally from tribal divisions. Vedic tribes regarded themselves as Arjo, the noble ones, and Dasa, rival tribes who were frequent allies of the Aryan tribes who were often labourers. Towards the end of the Atharvaveda period, new class distinctions emerged. The Aryas were renamed Vashya, while the Dashas were renamed Shudras. Two new elite classes of Brahmins, priests, and Kothriyas, warriors, were created. The Aboriginal tribes who became part of Aryan society as ex expanded were included among the Shudras. Although this became known later as the caste system, the rituals in the Vedas require the noble or king to eat with commoners from the same vessel. Clearly, the concept of untouchability did not come from the Vedic texts. Towards the end of the Vedic period, the Upanishads were written mainly anonymously by a number of sages. They were ancient Sanskrit texts which are part of the Vedas. The Upanishads marked a transition away from Vedic ritualism towards new ideas and institutions. 
The ideas associated with the Upanishads had a profound effect on social life. The notion that every element of creation, humans, animals, plants, rocks and so on, had a portion of the world soul, Atta, dwelling in them, gained acceptance within ancient Indian society. With it came a respect for all living things. The invasion of India by Alexander the Great in 327 BCE started a period of at least three centuries of Hellenic influence in the traditions, arts and culture of the northwest of the Indian subcontinent. This may also have contributed to the idolatry and multiple deities of modern Hinduism. From around the time of Buddha, further texts were composed. These included the Dharma Sutras and Shastras as well as the epics Mahabharata and Ramayana. During this period, the Vedic fire sacrifice became minimized with the development of devotional worship, puja, and images of deities in temples. The rise of the Gupta Empire, 320 to 500 CE, saw the development of Vaishnavism, focused on Vishnu, Shaivism, focused on Shiva, and Shaktiism, focused on Devi.